Understanding business credit scores and ratings. Yes, there is a difference. No, banks do not see them as one and one the same. They are not mutually exclusive. And that is why I am making this video so that you can tell the difference and the importance of each of them because I see this mistake get thrown around quite a bit and I don't want you to be one of those people. So with that in mind, let's get right into it. So key distinction with a or between a business credit score and a business credit rating. Yo, here's the thing. You'll see both of them on your reports. And so here's going to be the con or, or like the main difference between each of them. Number one is a business credit score is a number focused on payment history. Primarily in its essence, that's what it is. Similar to what we have on the personal credit side, there's not much that goes into a personal credit score other than are you making your payments on time and your total credit usage. It's kind of the same on the business uh, on the business credit score side because th if you think about it, on the personal credit score side, you don't get weighed like what you do for work. Like that doesn't even get taken into account, right? You also don't get graded on your industry or how old you are. It's just about the age of the credit profile as a whole. But on the business credit rating side, that's where it actually defers. And that's where the key difference is. And so when it comes to a business credit rating, this provides a broader view of the company's overall health. I want to give you a very much so real world example and make it as layman as possible. Think of it like someone's weight. I like talking about fitness quite a bit because I've been on my own fitness journey. I play college ball. And so I always like to relate things back to fitness. If we're just looking at a score, then that score would be a 200 pound male. But if we're looking at a rating or the overall health of the human being, which in this case, again, the example is a human being with the example of a business credit rating, then we have a 200 pound male at 35% body fat who only sleeps around four hours. Sounds a lot like me now that I have four kids at home, right? If you're a parent, then you, you understand four is the new eight, right? But I digress. Four hours a day is what they're getting in rest. And they don't exercise, but yet they slam around three cans of Red Bull a day, preferably the bigger ones. If you know what I'm talking about, if you know, you know. So you can see the big discrepancy between just saying, hey, I weigh 200 pounds. And oh, by the way, dude, I only get about four hours of sleep. I have 35, you know, uh, percent body fat. Um, I don't exercise much and I'm living off of Red Bull and a couple of espressos in between that, if we're just being honest, right? That's what happens when somebody is just looking at a business credit score or a business credit rating. It's not getting the full picture. I want to show you what that looks like right now in real time. Now, mind you, there's different scoring ranges depending on the business credit report that we're looking at. So for context, if you wanted to follow along, I'm scoring right now and I'm reviewing with you in real time an Experian business credit report. And so this score right here, it's a financial stability risk rating and it goes from one to five. Now, I have no idea why they have like this little meter go this way when it really should be going like this way. If it's like one to five, it drives me nuts, but it is what it is. So one to five, in this case, one being good, five being bad. As you can see here, and by the way, this is an actual credit report that I got my hands on from a client that we are working with. And so the financial stability score risk rating indicates this right here, which is a phenomenal score. Like this is beautiful. 0.55% of potential risk. That's actually less than 1% of the business going into, again, financial stress, or in this case, distress within the next 12 months. Irv, why, you know, why does this rating even matter? Like, does it actually matter? It does matter. Here's why. Banks, especially in this economy, I can't speak for 12 months back. I can't speak for six months ago. I can only speak to what's happening right now going into October of 2024. And this and this data right here, probably adjust a little bit more going into the following year, is this. Banks are no longer just looking at personal credit scores. Now, they were mainly making decisions based off of, hey, does somebody have an LLC? Do they have a pulse? 
And do they have at least a 750 credit score? Cool. Let's get them some credit. Do those things still have a good amount of weight or significant weight on getting uh, getting approved for at least a business credit card or a business on a credit? Yes, but not as much anymore because they have what's called a dual score, meaning they're looking at both your business credit side and your personal credit side. And in addition to that, now that they're also wanting to see more of their uh, now that now that they're really uh, now that they're mitigating the risk on the lending appetite side, they are looking at twelve months. Because we don't just want to do business with you today. This is the this is the part that a lot of people don't like talking about, but I'm going to mention it. When a bank or a financial institution is going to lend out to you, they're not just saying, hey, we're lending out to this person today. We pray to God we get our money by tomorrow. They are seeing it as a long-term relationship. And if you're in business, then hopefully you see it that way where I don't plan on going out of business in the next 12 months. If you're like short-sighted, if you lack vision, then you're most likely in the frame of, hey, I just want to get as much capital as I can and walk away from the debt. Those days are gone. Banks do not want to do business with those types of business owners, which is why looking at this data is crucial because this puts you levels ahead of what other people are doing in your marketplace. And you'll know just off of watching this piece of content alone, even just watching our channel alone, what to look at based off of what banks are looking at in real time. And I know this because this is how we analyze files. And we also have constant communication with some of the best business bankers in the country. So I, I can tell you from like firsthand experience, this is what needs to be done. Key rating factors, number of active commercial accounts. So if you have uh, maybe cards with Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, that's what's considered commercial accounts. Those commercial accounts are financial accounts. So this score right here isn't necessarily predicated on net 30s, net 45s. It doesn't even move the needle on this thing at all. Like no pun intended, but the needle's right here. It doesn't even move the needle on it. They're looking primarily at business lines of credit and business credit cards. The other risk that's associated is, and this is huge, and I hope you get this, is the company's industry sector. If you've been watching us for some time, or if you've been following just your industry as a whole, then you know that we talk a lot about this, especially on this channel, where we say, hey, just because you see people saying, hey, put consulting as your industry or put, let's say, you know, business management as your business, and it has nothing to do with what your line of work actually is, it could actually hurt you when they take a deeper dive into the risk calculation of how your business is weighed compared to other businesses inside of that industry. Next up is the balance to high credit ratio for those commercial accounts, aka they're looking at the total credit usage that's also calculated into this equation. And then lastly, the risk associated with the business type. This last piece right here is crucial. And I'm going to put it like, like an extra little bubble right here. The risk associated with the business type is crucial because yes, you want to pick a business or an industry, I should say, like a industry classification that makes sense for your line of work. But you also, whoops, let me go back. Got ahead of myself, got excited. But you also want to categorize the business and bucket it inside of the industry that isn't going to put you into the red zone. And so a real world example of that is banks have what's known as a lending appetite. And then they have what's known as a lending portfolio. Here's what that means. If you would have asked me two years ago, Irv, what are some businesses, even though they're high risk, that are still getting funding? I would have said trucking. And this day and age right now, with how risky the trucking industry is, even though it's a, it's a great line of work, my dad was a trucker for over 30 years, banks are starting to pull away from it, meaning they're lending out to that type of industry less and less. And so now kind of like when somebody balances their stocks is, okay, I'm no longer going to invest much in this company. I'm going to rebalance my books and I'm going to invest more into maybe tech stocks, or I'm going to invest a little bit more into pharma stocks, whatever that is. It's the same thing here. So now banks pull away from, okay, the industry as a whole and trucking is a bit risky. Let's pull away from that. And then now let's rebalance our portfolio and do a little bit more of maybe medical or do a little bit more auto, 
or do a little bit more construction. And by the way, that gauge is changing. You want to pay attention to this because if you're just going based off of what you heard last year, hey, this is the industry to go to, or hey, this is like the ironclad approach to doing this, you have to take into account that there's microeconomics and macroeconomics. And so you want to adjust accordingly, which is something that we do with our clients all the time. Now there is your business credit score, right? Now business credit score, at least the one that we're looking at, ranges from one to 100, right? Which is what you see right here. This is a bit more, I'd say, middle of the road, right? It's not, you know, it's not the best if we're if we're honest. We we'd want to see this closer to right around 70. As you can see, this it's medium risk, right? It's not it's not high risk, but we would want to see this bump a little bit more into that 65, 70 range, putting us putting us a little bit into the lower threshold. This score right here is predicated on this, which is the average benchmark score for other businesses in your industry are at a 44. So for this specific business, if I'm looking at it, I'm letting them know, hey, we're actually slightly below average. I know it's by one point, but you also have to take into, in, into account, we're already at a medium risk score and then we're already slightly below average. So if you're asking me, Irv, well, what are some things that maybe I can do to improve this score right here? Well, remember what I said earlier, most of these scores right here are predicated on your ability to pay down accounts on time. So obviously the same way that you wouldn't want to be late on the personal side, you definitely don't want to be late on the business side. And then also what's the total balance that's being carried on these accounts in any given moment. And so you essentially have two options at this point, if you wanted to bump the score up some number one, simple, start paying down some of the accounts, you have your cash flow coming in, start working on some of those accounts, which also preps you for future rounds of funding. Fantastic. The second route that you have is if you are getting yourself ready for some funding and you start getting those approvals lining that they that start lining up across the board. Now you have maybe if the total amount that you had access to was 50 K and now you maybe go through a round of funding, you probably added 150 on there, give or take, you're now at a total of 200. That's another way that you can essentially lower the utilization without having made any payments. Now the sweet spot, that I want you to you know, live in and think about isn't just about adding a ton, a ton of credit lines and not paying it back. The sweet spot is adding credit lines. And by the way, this is how we scale, adding the credit lines and also being financially responsible, the business owners that we are, and working those accounts down. And lastly, we have the small business financial exchange rating. Now, this is out of five. Remember what we said earlier, at a risk rating or when it comes to ratings, it goes from one to five. So you want it to be the other way, meaning you want it to be at a one, which is why this is at high risk. If you can get it to a three, that's fine. But two to one is the land that you want to live in. Now, the SBFE, which, by the way, is a small business financial exchange. The small business financial exchange, I do want to say this. They're not an actual business credit bureau. They are a data furnishing company that gives data to the business credit bureaus predominantly on the financial account side. And so if your goal is to get access to, again, business lines of credit, real cash value that you can pull from, cover things like payroll, buy real estate, materials, use it for e-commerce stores, business credit cards. If your goal is for that type of capital, not the net 30 stuff, which is linked mainly to Paydex or linked to Dun & Bradstreet, then you want to pay attention to this score right here. Now, an SBFE risk rating, a five indicates a high potential likelihood of serious credit delinquencies over the next 12 months. And then you have right here, the key factors that goes into it. Number of commercial trades without delinquency is too low. Commercial inquiries are too high. This is something that you, that you do want to pay attention to is there is a method to scaling capital and it's not just applying for a bunch of stuff or even thinking that just credit stacking alone is going to do it. You want to time the inquiries because the same way that you're getting hit with inquiries on the personal side, you're also getting hit with inquiries on the business side. And that actually ties into this right here. Commercial payment activity is too low and available credit on the commercial trades is too low. What's really driving this score down, if I have to give it a final analysis, it's going to be these two right here because there's a strong correlation between this score being, this is why I say, you want to take a look at both the score and the risk rating as a whole, not just, you know, hey, 
this one's better than the other, even though banks look at both. Because with your rating, you're going to get the full picture. But with the risk, you're going to get kind of like surface level. So you can kind of gauge, okay, my utilization is probably a little bit higher. And then this piece right here will tell the final story, which is yes, which is we see it right here. Commercial payment activity is too low, meaning we're maybe not sending enough money to pay these accounts down. Maybe we're sending the bare minimum. Maybe we're utilizing, if you have a project and the total accounts that you have is 50 and each month you use up 35K, but then you only pay back, let's say 5K every month, then obviously you're starting to get into the red zone. And then available credit on the commercial revolving, this is huge. This is why I say this is not, I repeat, this is not net 30 accounts. These are commercial accounts on the revolving trades is too low, which goes back to what we just finished mentioning about 25 seconds ago. If I'm this business owner, I want to look at two things. I'm either paying these accounts down a little bit more, sending a little bit more funds to it, getting that cash flow in place so that I can work my way into a funding round or start working my way into a funding round so that I don't have like such a tight loop. Because let's be honest here, if you only have 50K to work with every single month and I have 200K on my balances on available credit line, then if my projects spike to about 30K, I still have right around 75, 80% give or take utilization that's being reported versus 30 at the 50, I'm sitting right around 75, 80. And so those are the two uh, you know, central places that I would be looking at as a business owner to bump my rating and then also to get this, to get to, to, to bump my rating, aka go backwards, get this to a one or a two, and also to fix this score right here that we just saw, get that above a 70. If you found value in this type of content, let us know because a lot of you guys requested this style of video where we're doing a full audit on a report. This is actually quite fun for me, if I'm being honest with you. I'm not saying that the other stuff isn't, but this is really cool so you guys can see it in real time. If you want to see more of that, just go ahead and comment down below. Hey, we want to see more of this, maybe a different credit bureau. We have a lot of data on this stuff that I would love to share with you. If you are a business owner and you're looking to get access to business credit, properly structure your business and put a essentially a system, a setup into place that's going to allow you to get funding in a consistent basis, we'll love to talk to you. You can book a call over at insightinnercircle.com. The link is down below. We'll see where your business is at, see some parts that we can help you fix, take you to the next level. Um, and if not, we'll give you some data based off of where you're at that'll maybe leave you better than how you came in. But other than that, I appreciate you guys checking me out. Until next time, everyone, I will see you in the next video. Bye.